Welcome back to Who's Number One, presented by Saucony. We're gonna go straight into our speed round this week. If you needed some speed rating explanation, check out below. NXN Southwest was our deep dive last week. It's all about those individuals this weekend though, because Lauren Gregory is back from injury. She posts a 150 out in Colorado, but in the same race, Bjorkley says, I don't think so. One ups her, 152 for the win, and for the fastest speed rating of 2016. Then in Utah on the boys side, Talon Hall, footlocker finalist last year, opens up his season with a 186 over Garrett Barton. One second difference, 186 for both. Southwest is killing it. Now we're gonna transition into our deep dive for the week. We're gonna take a look at the Southeast because already we have a lot of big races. Teams are firing off, individuals are running well. North Carolina is going to Virginia and winning. Virginia is going to Pennsylvania and winning. We have no idea what's going on, and that's why we're bringing in the one only B Miles, Brandon Miles, to break down and make some sense of all this nonsense. Let's start off, and if you can break down what the team outlook is on the boys' side specifically for NXN and Southeast. There's two teams that really stand out. Uh, one's Brentwood. You know, they look like a couple of years ago, they had a really strong team to finish third at NXN, which is the highest finish ever um, for a boys squad at NXN. And they kind of have a similar uh, squad this year where they have a really strong top four uh, with like four guys that could be number one runners on most teams. And you saw just last week, they ran Chickasaw Trails down Alabama and they had Brody Hasty. Everyone knows uh, one of the top returning cross country runners from NXN. Uh, last year, individually, the regional champion uh, and the Vroon brothers and Scott Thompson, they were around 1530 to 1534 as a pack. So that's going to be, uh, if, if they're fifth, it's just halfway decent. Uh, um, I don't see any team um, beating them in the region um, just based off of that if they're hitting on all cylinders. Uh, but a couple other teams to look out for Broughton Boys right there in the Raleigh. Re uh, Raleigh area where the horse is at. Uh, it seems like a lot of years they're always on that cusp and they always start off really well and then have been on the outside looking in a lot of years. But I think this is a year that they can maybe put themselves uh, in that top two. Um, St. Xavier um, from Kentucky is also a solid squad um, to look for. Um, they have a good pack of guys. They've got, I believe, three guys coming back that ran under 16 last year. Um, that's a key, I think, you know, having, a, um, a couple guys, uh, more than just two, I mean, especially cause the NXN regional course is so fast that, um, you know, you know, other places like, you know, just a couple guys running sub 16 will, will do the job in most regions. But in this region, since the regional course is fast, it's like, you know, you should have your top five under 16. Uh, or they are close to it and hopefully have some other guys that are lower 15s in that weight med course. We've seen some early noise made by Loudon Valley this season with a couple big races. Does that put them in the mix or do they still have something to prove before you consider them a contender to make it to NXN? Often when we kind of look, you know, put a list together for top returners, we kind of look at the programs that always go to NXN every year. So Loudon Valley one of those teams and they really haven't had much of a team until the last couple of years it was really um not a great program until uh drew's parents joan and mark took over the program a couple of years ago so i mean they ran really well up, up ptxc winning up there against some top uh northeast squads so um so i would say yeah um, loudon valley is a team that i could see see them taking one of those two spots how about the girls? Do you have that many contenders in the mix, too? Two compelling parts about that. It would be easy to kind of assume that those two teams would go back since they return. Uh, Blake Brack returned six of their top seven, I believe, from a year ago, and Blacksburg's five of their top seven. But two key things why it might uh, open the door for other teams. Uh, one, starting with uh, Blacksburg, uh, last cross-country season was the last year of James DeMarco as the head coach there. James built that program back up and was you know, arguably one of the best uh, cross-country coaches in the state of Virginia. He's, he's moved on uh, out of state with his wife for, for her, her uh, education and career. And so Blacksburg, you know, 
had him uh, through last cross country season. They've kept that success going, but I'm just I'm just wondering because James just had that pulse, I mean, you know, as far as that team um, to get them to NXN uh, several times. I believe Blacks were qualified three times with having a great runner like uh, Kate Murphy. Uh, will she go the Foot Locker route? Will she go the NXN route? Um, and, and Lake Bragg's dealt with this in the past. Actually, a couple years ago, they had the same situation with, with Sophie Chase, and she opted to go the Foot Locker route, and her team ran an NXN, and they, they were third that year at the regional, um, but still didn't get the at-large berth uh, without, without Sophie running. I believe um, Kate's different than Sophie. Well, in, in, I just feel like Kate is very team-minded, uh, she's always big on running the four by eights with her team during the track season, run the DMR pen relays. I would, I, and she's had the NXN experience and kind of feel like she's a Nike girl too. <laughs> like, you know, like, I mean, the kids love the swag there and, and I don't know, she, I know Oregon's probably, it's one of her top, top choices as well for school. So, um, I'd be interested in that. But one thing to note with Lake Braddock, they have a history that they were competing with Saratoga Springs a couple years ago, before NXN, for having the most qualifiers for Foot Locker um, from a program. I know they were up there, and I think since Saratoga has always gone to NXN now, since NXN's created, I think Lake Braddock has taken that lead maybe by one with Sophie a couple years ago. So um, so that's something I know their coach um, is proud of, and so I'm not sure um, how that how, how that will go. So if you, if you look at that, then... Um, the teams um, that were there last year that were on the outside looking in, like Bulls from uh, Florida and Riverside, uh, South Carolina, um, those are two teams that could be in that mix, um, and they kind of return similar, uh, pretty much their main squads back. So, you know, I think the doors open possibly because of those two factors with the Virginia squads. You know, c- coach leaving from Blacksburg that was part of success. Where's Kate Murphy going? If NXN and Southeast is run today, which two boys teams and which two girls teams get those auto spots? Yeah, if if it was run today, I would go with Brentwood uh, for boys and uh, two spot Loudon Valley, um, and then for the girls, uh, I would say Lake Braddock would be one, and Blacksburg two. Thanks again to Brandon Miles for joining us this week to talk about everything that's going down in the Southeast region. You can see the full interview below with him. We go into a lot more detail about Foot Locker and a lot of other topics. So check that out if you want to see the full video and stay tuned next week for more action from Who's Number One.